You don't have an orthodox doctrine of God. You have a very man-centered doctrine of God. You've got a God who's, who's just doing the best he can with what he's got. You have to have an extremely man-centered view, extremely man-centered view of, man, of God. For him to be sitting up there in heaven going, huh? Oh my goodness. I, because, you know, God made us capable of doing this, but he wasn't smart enough to understand his own creatures well enough to know that they would become that depraved. Okay. The concern I have is with uh, humanism in that a definition that is given and then you altered it when you applied it to God is uh, man-centered instead of God-centered. Uh, God is the standard of, of righteousness. Be holy for I am holy, 1 Peter 1, 16. So he, we have to live up to him, not him lowering our standard to us. All right, I'm going to do a video explaining why Calvinism is actually a man-centered theology. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because... <clears throat> Calvinists will actually accuse you if you believe in what they call libertarian free will. They'll accuse you of believing in man-centered theology that puts man and not God first. But the ironic thing about that is that it's actually Calvinism that is the man-centered and not the God-centered theology. Okay, what do I mean by that? How is that? How is that so? Well, because in Calvinism, God does everything for men, and God's actions revolve around man because mankind has no free will or power of contrary choice. You're essentially just a robot for God. Uh, in Calvinism, their tulip theology, they see they have the tulip, which is total depravity is, is what the T stands for. Literally, the first, you know, uh, word, the first letter in tulip, it literally starts off with man, i.e. total depravity equals man is totally depraved. So their theology begins with man. And God only comes in second with unconditional election. Calvinism also turns God into a respecter of persons since he chooses some men for salvation, which is only further showing that it's man-centered. Okay, A God-centered theology is where God is in the middle and man is serving God. Basically, God-centered theology is where man serves God and does things for God. Okay, Free will is God-centered because it's God who gave us that free will. And God is, is who gave us the ability to choose salvation and choose to believe in, in the gospel. And God is who made salvation available to all. God-centered theology is when you have the ability to choose right from wrong. And if you sin, you've got nobody to blame but yourself. And God is, when he enacts his judgment and punishment on you and chastisement for sinning, you have no one to blame but yourself. And God is perfectly righteous in doing so. Okay, man-centered theology is when you have no free will and God causes you to sin. And in the end, mankind, you can just blame God for your sins. Okay, God-centered theology is where, you, where God is perfectly just and right basically in the right, for punishing you for your sin since you chose to do that sin and thus you have to give an account for what you did and you can't blame God and you can't even blame the devil in most cases. You've got no one to blame but yourself. So that's that's how Calvinism is man-centered because everything God does revolves around you, basically. So it's actually Calvinism that is the man-centered theology that is man-exalting and not God-centered. So, and here's some scriptures on the matter too. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you're having to do it by your own choice, and God is getting the glory for it. That's what you call God-centered theology. Romans chapter 15, verses 16 to 17. Romans 15, verses 16 to 17, says, That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore, whereof I may glory, in th I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which, per which pertain to God. And also, if you read in Acts chapter 26, I believe it is, Paul says he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He chose to serve God by his own will. And again, we see he's giving God the glory for it. That's God-centered theology. Free will is a God-centered theology, not man-centered. Psalms 19, verse 14. Psalms 19, verse 14. Another good scripture on the matter. Psalms 19, 14. It says... Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Again, more God-centered type of uh, scriptures right there. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians 8, 
three to five. Uh, for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Again, we see the holding of the, the will being enacted, and again, it's to the glory of God. God is the one who's getting the glory. Paul is the one who's giving, Paul is basically giving God the glory, the Apostle Paul. I'll put it that way. He's the one who's giving God the glory for it by them doing it by their own will. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 to 6. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 5 to 6. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See, when you're choosing to serve God, it, again, you're seeing it's God who's getting the glory for it all. So it's not, free will is not in any way man-centered. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 13 to 15. For whether we be at, whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God; or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we were then we sorry then we we're all dead. I apologize about that. Uh, and that he died for all, that they may that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Also, notice verse fourteen: uh, He died for all. You know kind of refutes limited atonement as well, but we see, you know, when you're serving God, it's God is the one who gets the glory. So it's not man-centered, as Calvinism would claim, it's actually the opposite. It's Calvinism, again, that's man-centered, because man is the center and God is doing everything for man. That's what you have there. So anyway, just showing the fact that Calvinism is, it's projection. Everything they accuse you of are what they themselves are guilty of. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.